Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a binary logistic regression. So a binary logistic regression is when you have one dependent variable that uh, is dichotomous, so there are only two categories that you're trying to predict. Now, logistic regression is uh, appropriate for that type of analysis, and, uh, and it also accommodates independent variables that are uh, scaled on an interval ratio scale, or an ordinal scale, or a nominal scale. And in this fictitious example, I've got a dependent variable that is dichotomous, and it's credit default. And what I've uh, simulated are data that are, you know, let's just talk about, um, I'm talking about uh, subprime mortgages. Who's going to default on a subprime mortgage? Uh, so I've got my zeros that uh, demarcate people who did not default and then I've got a series of ones that are interspersed across the data I've actually got the data sorted across um, sa uh, salary to a certain degree so it does look like it's organized uh, so there's there are some ones in there but there's far fewer in frequency in fact it's about 10 percent of people that I've simulated uh, that are defaulting on a subprime mortgage that's probably higher than average but I just use that as an example uh, and my independent variables are annual salary and gender. And so I'm going to try to use these two independent variables to predict who is going to default on a subprime mortgage. So salary is measured in thousands of dollars. So this person here earned $120,000. And gender, 0, 1. 1 is male and 0 is female. And I believe there's about 50% equal here of males and females. All right, so now to perform the binary logistic regression, going to analyze regression, binary logistic, we got credit default which is the dependent variable, annual salary and gender. I'm going to put that into my covariates. These are basically the predictors. Uh, they're actually, that's exactly what they are, the predictors. Now because gender is uh, dichotomous only, so it's only got two uh, levels uh, in the nominal variable, I can actually include it in the covariates. But if you had another variable that had more categories than two, you'd actually have to use the categorical option here. And I'm not going to talk about that um, in this video series, but it, it does add complexity to your analysis and the output. So I'm trying to keep this relatively simple. I'm going to use method enter. Uh, so I'm going to force both independent variables into the model. Uh, I got block one of one, so I'm not actually going to do a hierarchical uh, logistic regression, which would be a little bit more complicated. I'm just entering them into one block, and I'm forcing them both into the equation. There is one option I want to choose, which is Hosmer uh, Lemeshow goodness of fit. Um, the rest are, I would argue, probably a little bit less uh, important. I'm not saying you can't get valuable information from them. Probably the 95% confidence in intervals are probably uh, fairly interesting, but I'm going to try to keep it relatively simple because logistic regression is relatively complicated already. Uh, I am going to save uh, two variables, pr probabilities and group membership. And if I have enough time, I'm going to go through that. I'm, my hunch is, is I won't because I'm going to try to keep this just to the, to the basics. Uh, but if I, if I feel like I've got time to do so, I'll actually talk about that uh, in, more de in more detail than what you get information from the output. All right, so uh, that's all I'm going to click uh, for those options. I'm going to click OK. Okay, so the uh, first output table is telling me that we've got 189 people in the uh, sample, no missing data. And then it's saying my dependent variable coded no, yes, as in no, did not default on their subprime loan, and yes, did default on their subprime loan. And then the next table, which is after block zero. Now block zero means uh, that there's no, there are no predicted variables included in the um, in the model. It's really just a intercept only model. Uh, it's basically a null model, if you will. Uh, so it's important now. It's actually quite important to still interpret uh, the null model. I think a lot of people just blow by it and um, and uh, think you don't get any uh, interesting information. It looks like SPSS is actually crashing on me. I can't actually move my. Let me see if I can get that back up. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, I've jumped down a bit. Okay, so here's our classification table. Now this is uh, a null model with no prediction, and the classification accuracy, accuracy here is 90.5%. Now that sounds impressive. It's not. The model's basically saying, what if we predicted everyone as a non-default? 
uh, what accuracy would we get? Well, because the vast majority of people don't 